We have another Warren article here, Grist Mill Dam, um, <coughs> on petition of Kim Gordon, Grondon, Grondon yeah. and 25 or more registered voters to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 for the purpose of providing <coughs> additional funding needed to complete the reconstruction and association associated activities of the Grist Mill Dam, also known as the Mill Pond Dam, and to amend the town of Hampton Warren Article 38 from 2015 by changing the required comp completion date to until the repair or rebuilding of the Grist Mill Dam is completed or to March 31st, 2020, whichever is sooner, subject to the appropriation. The sum of $100,000 of this amount is to come from the town's unassigned general fund balance, a fund containing unexpended appropriations from prior years as of December 31st, 2017, and no additional amount to be raised from taxation in this tax year. This will be a non-lapsing <coughs> appropriation per RSA 32 column 7 comma Roman numeral 6 and, six and shall not lapse until the work is completed or or by on, it says or, completed or, or, but should say on, or completed on or by March 31st, 2020, whichever is sooner. Majority vote required, no tax impact. Note the additional funding is requested as the original value of the project was based on an opinion of cost from preliminary plans completed over five years ago. Competitive build bids have been received for the reconstruction of the dam and are based on actual field conditions and a fully engineered design. The State of New Hampshire Dam Bureau required the Town of Hampton to either repair or remove the existing dam or face daily fines for not complying with the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services letter of deficiency dated July 2012. It is if this warrant article does not pass, a future warrant article will be required with additional money to meet the requirements of the state. Recommended by the Board of Selectmen 300, uh, fiscal note, no t tax impact. Would anybody like to make a motion to recommend this? I'd like to discuss it. Well, David, first just make I'll a motion. I make okay. a motion to, uh, to recommend. recommend. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Brian, and go ahead, David. It says in the middle of this, and I think we dis I discussed briefly with you guys beforehand, but it's the town's unassessed general fund balance. Unassessed. Unassessed. How much is in that balance to begin with? And the other aspect we went, is this the library fund type c c consideration type? But then isn't that general fund also help us us with bonds? If there's X amount of dollars, we get a lot, we get a lower interest rate on bonds or if that this fund starts to deplete, would we have higher, which would therefore cost the taxpayer? That's a question. Yeah, that's a question that I'd like perhaps a manager the, the town manager or the financial director to um, answer, please. Yeah. Yeah. Get untangled from all these chairs. <laughs> I know, they're all, they're in a, they're all been set in funny places. Yeah, rearranged. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they've been, uh, Adjusted. Yeah. Adjusted. Yeah. Adjusted. That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking in here. Yeah, there you go. Um, it doesn't affect our bond rating. It doesn't affect our interest. Um, we, we have a well-balanced financial por uh, portfolio. Uh, the state requires us to, or recommends, I should say, that we hold 5%. We're closer to 10%. We have more than $6.4 million in that on a signed fund balance, so there's plenty of money in there too. What, what is it, how does it get, if it gets lowered, how does it get replenished? It's replenished every year at the time the audit is done. Uh, the unexpent appropriations automatically go into that fund uh, that have been <coughs> raised at the previous town meeting, and any revenues in excess of that applied to the tax rate goes into that fund by statute. The, the uh, auditors uh, provide the audit for that, and the Department of Revenue approves it. And then we use usually a hundred, anywhere from six hundred thousand to a million dollars to decrease taxes from that fund each year. So, how does it not affect the tax rate? Well, it doesn't affect the tax rate because it's not money that's raised. Uh, it's, that well, it was is, raised at one time. Well, yeah. but it's no longer raised. The appropriations have already been have have already been in, in taken by the Treasury Department, and the money is in the bank. So it's, it's not going to be raised again is the point. Uh, and yet you have the money there to spend to do different projects within the community. 
and without having to impact the tax rate itself. And what we do, we do take up to a million dollars a year out of that fund to decrease the taxes each and every year. We are required to maintain money in that account for the state. Which comes from tax money. Which comes from tax money. And if we don't maintain money, when I first came here, we maintained a balance of zero. There was no reserve fund. And we were spending several hundred thousand dollars a year in interest to borrow funds. That's what I was kind of leading to earlier yeah. with my question. Right. We don't borrow funds anymore because that's $6.4 million is sitting there and we roll that in with the tax payments and that money keeps us funded. Without having to spend those extra I'm, monies. I'm missing a little bit on the explanation, and it's me, not you, that the $6 million had to come from somewhere, and I'm saying, well, it was overages in years when we didn't spend it, it gets put into this bucket. We, in other words, I'll, I'm interpreting we collected $100 million, we needed $98 million, right. and therefore we had $2 million left over. So rather than giving it back to the taxpayers, they throw it into the slush fund. Not a slush fund. I'll call it a slush fund. Um, it's still not a slush fund. It's a statutory <coughs> fund. It's a who? Statutory fund. Statutory fund. It is required fund. by statute the fund be there. Which before was zero. What we happened before, let me, let me give you the story about how this all transpired when I first came here. Um, we did an audit the first year I was here, and uh, I think it was the second selectman's meeting I attended. The audit came in and it said we had $747,000 uh, remaining from the previous year between appropriations and revenues that weren't either received or not expended. And there was an immediate motion by a member of the Board of Selectmen to take that $747,000 and apply it to the tax rate. And before they could vote on it, I said, then I will have the treasurer here next week and we'll have a, bo a borrowing ready for $747,000. And they said, why? And I said, it's simple. You appropriated $25 million worth of expenditures, and you received $20, $23 million worth of revenue. You're $2 million short. So you, you, you're minus $2 million in, in actual cash. So we came up with a process whereby we would start saving money and put it, put it into the unreserved fund balance instead of trying to expend money we didn't have. Now we have the money. David. I think that you, when you have to go out and it's called a TAN loan. Tax anticipation. Yeah, right, yeah. TAN loan. But are you all set, David? Kind of. It's, it's, having a, it's having some extra money so you don't have to go out and borrow it before anticipation of taxes. Okay. And because it, what happens is that if they don't, we don't start collecting taxes until June. Right. Right. Well, they've got to have some money to pay the bills. And if you have nothing, then you've got to take a TAN loan out. The treasurer does. Well, in the old days, we had a tax bill once a year. Now it's semi-annual. Someday it may be more. Right. Yeah, there are towns that actually issue it uh, monthly now. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh. It, it can. It depends upon the town and how you want to uh, you know, do things. Okay, so, uh, my, uh, yeah, Mike. Yeah, they'll Tim. <laughs> Tim, please. Are you done, David? You can call oh, me no. Joe today. <laughs> Are you, are you he, done? I'm done if you call him Joe. <laughs> no, I'm not calling Mr. Jones Joe. Go ahead, Tim. It is required to have an unassigned fund balance or an undesignated fund balance, whatever they happen to be calling it this year. Right. But there is no requirement in terms of the amount of money in there. It could be zero. Right? Legally it can speaking. be zero. Legally speaking. Yeah. All right. So I hope that answered the question and gave it more clarity. Uh, and, and Fred's uh, history is generally accurate, I think. Uh, We've grown that, under, that uh, unassigned fund balance uh, the last 11 since, years. since his uh, tenure began, yeah. basically. Um, but yeah. I, want to, I want to speak to Basically that. our working capital during the year. I don't want to get into a deep discussion on that because nice. it gets all, all kinds of philosophy and we don't, we don't have time for that because we're always going fast, right, Steve? Thank you very much, Tim. Uh, but I do have to do a little bit of history here. Um, on this particular Warren article. Are you going to speak on the Warren article itself? Absolutely. I wish you would. <laughs> um, no, because, no, this is important, David, because this board, this isn't the first time, this committee, this isn't the first time we've had this. Address so, this issue. Yeah. Tim, please yeah. start with the uh, history. Uh, as you'll note in this uh, Warren article, it refers to uh, the 2015 uh, Warren article number 38. Uh, and, and basically it's taking that date in that Warren article and extending it out uh, another three years, right, Fred, basically? 
And that includes the uh, appropriation that was in that warrant. Yes, it does. Because that appropriation hasn't run out yet. Right. So that appropriation uh, from uh, not for 38 and 2015 was for a quarter of a million dollars. One one would think, but if one looks more carefully, that warrant article did the same thing. It actually extended a warrant article from the previous year, and took the appropriation from that year, and lumped it in. Right. Do you remember the amount? It seems like it was four hundred and fifty. It was four hundred thousand dollars. We're talking 000. about twenty fourteen, which was Article fifteen. In that particular. In that year, particular. Well, it wasn't a. It wasn't a non-lapsing warrant article. Okay, but go ahead, Tim. Please continue. I don't mean to interrupt you. So that's when this whole discussion of the grist mill dam began. It was really in twenty fourteen, and in twenty fourteen, the selectmen put a warrant article out. Uh, to decommission the dam, appropriated four hundred thousand dollars for that decommission. Right, Fred? Yep. Tim, which, by the way, was the recommendation of the state of New Hampshire. Right, go, go ahead, Tim. Sorry. That that warrant article passed by seventy-two point four eight percent to decommission the dam. <coughs> During the, that year, nothing was done to decommission the dam. The private petition warrant article, so-called citizens warrant article, was then produced in 2015, Article 38, to take that $400,000, add $250,000 to it, to repair the dam. So now we've got $650,000 to repair the dam. With a non-lapsing warrant article, right? Yeah. And now today, um, they Basically, three years later, since this money is going to expire, if they don't use it, this warrant article seeks to extend that $650,000 in terms of its date and add another $100,000 to that, <coughs> making a grand total of $750,000, three quarters of a million dollars to repair this dam. Did I get those numbers right, Fred? Well, I don't have them in front of me, but I'm going to trust you for so. Okay, I appreciate that. <coughs> <laughs> so... <clears throat> what is interesting to note, a couple of things in my mind, is this. The pond that this dam protects, or creates, actually, right? Creates. Maintains. <laughs> the no, the Without right that thing. dam, that pond wouldn't exist, right? Where'd the exactly. beaver go? Actually, it would. It'd be a stream. It'd right? be a different yeah. place. Right. Yeah, it'd be a stream, right? No, actually, no. The, the, di the, the dam, if we were not there, the pond would be in a different place. Do you know where it would be? Yeah, further further back on the existing pond. Oh, so it would simply be on the existing pond. Yeah, depending on, on the pond, yeah, depending on the beavers, correct? Well, no. <laughs> well, the beavers it don't play actually, on this one. That's a different dam. <laughs> it actually would. Uh, the original flow went down Spring Head Brook, right? uh -huh. and came out uh, on on a river, the, the uh, Dows River, uh, into into the uh, into the uh, meadow pond. Okay, so this one article that I was referring to, and that this current one article, this proposed one article, refers to, in 2015. Unlike the previous one, which passed by well over seventy percent, this one passed by five votes to, to repair. Seventy percent, seventy-two percent said get rid of the dam. The subsequent warrant articles by five votes said no, let's fix it. Okay, and now we got six fifty, and now we're going to add a hundred thousand dollars more to it, three quarters of a million dollars to repair a dam that. The overwhelming majority of people in this town wanted to get rid of to begin with. Would you hold it? Oh, Tim, Tim's talking. Tim's talking. Furthermore, Fred, am I not correct that the land that this water exists on is not owned by the town but owned privately? Well, there's some debate about that. Mm. So we can't even be certain that the water that we're seeking to preserve actually sits on town land. We do own the water rights. And as well as the right to drain it. <laughs> so now we've got, if we pass this warrant article, three quarters of a million dollars to preserve water on what is largely, if not totally, private property. And no one can actually say clearly that who owns it. And that's a whole other level of dispute, much less likely to be a dispute if there's no water on it, though, of course. And of course, there is a neighborhood around that which enjoys the view of the water. And they're the ones that drive this warrant up. And I certainly appreciate them wanting to, to preserve their view. 
but I think the taxpayers are also equally wanting to preserve their money. <laughs> Tim, can so, I? I'm going to interrupt you for just a moment, please. Okay, you said that during the year prior to the 2015 Warren article, nothing was done. No, there was something done. It was called a guerrilla marketing campaign. Okay, you may remember that. I remember it very well because there were certain people, the very people that benefit the most appearing at every meeting everywhere for that entire year before that warrant that petition warrant article that passed by five votes okay there was a very heavy marketing campaign mm -hmm. that went on okay to to recreate this grist mill water dam now first of all just to make sure everybody understands the grist mill building that's sitting there right now do you want to continue Tim? yeah i would like to finish the okay go ahead the the dam has got nothing to do with the grist mill. The grist mill is a building which is non-functional relative to the dam. It was once upon a time a grist mill. That's not the original building. Remember right. that was gone many years ago. The one that's there now is just a reduction of it. It was never a, an actual working grist mill. Okay, just I want believe to make that sure. dam was put in like what three hundred years ago, something like that. And, uh, a couple of days ago. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> And, and uh, of course, it was done without EPA approval, as we can all know. So this was just some guy that wanted to do some gristing around with with, uh, with grain, and he just he, he just threw up a, a dirt and dam, all right, an earthen dam for the no. most part. No. One little part is not earthen, but if you go around the rest of it, it's all earthen around the property. Like if someone dug a hole out to hold the water, and then you got the dam where you can control for the grist mill. At least that's how I saw it when I went to visit that property. Um, in any case, it is not a naturally occurring not a naturally occurring pond at all. <laughs> it's not on uh, town-owned land, at least not provably owned by the town. Um, three quarters of a million dollars now. We're going to keep going. It's just this thing just keeps on going. It's like a nightmare. It never gets done. Always need more money, and it's always hurry up. We're going to get this done because it's historic. Well, it's not historic. As uh, the chairman just went through, there's a lot of elements about this that is not historic. But even more, even more abhorrent to me is the last phrase in this Warren article. If this Warren article does not pass, a future Warren article will be required for additional money to meet the requirements of the state. That is just a flat-out lie. The state wants to remove the dam. We already have the money to remove the dam. There will be no additional warrant required to remove the dam, will there, Fred? Yes, there will. Well, we already have the money. No, you don't. We have 650. You spent it. What? You spent it. Six hundred fifty thousand dollars. We've already appropriated, <coughs> and nothing's done that I can see. All the engineering work, all the all the work with the state, the federal government, the Army Corps of Engineers, all that work's all been done. And it all costs even, even even before this petition to warrant article originally came in to redo the dam, yeah. we spent a whole year meeting with the Army Corps of Engineers in the state of New Hampshire and all these other federal and state agencies. How much to of this appropriation has already been expended? I can't tell you that. I don't have I don't have the town records in front of me. I'm not going to guess at it. Yeah. But the reason there's a hundred thousand dollars here is because we're a hundred thousand dollars short on the appropriation for the bid that was received to complete the work. How much was that the, the town ordered it? I don't have the bid with me. Christine, you have these numbers? I have the November financial. I don't know. I think, um, actually, these are the other numbers. Um, 533980 is left on the warrant article. Right. But there could be more bills, though, because they just finished getting all the uh, bids so in, I believe. Right, Fred, for the price? All the bids and the engineering so work is, is finished. Money. So there's well yeah. over half a million dollars there. Yeah, and it's, it's going to cost an additional $100,000 to do I this under the state's to, to do requirements. The repair. The state also required the requirement was not to <coughs> rebuild it. We either would rebuild it or <coughs> decommission it. Now, decommissioning costs a lot less money, right? And the town voted to rebuild it. Well, 72% voted to decommission. No, no, no. Well, it, please no. let me finish. I'm going to make your point. 72% voted to decommission it, and a year later, by five votes, the town voted to repair it. Which was more than the 72%. No, it wasn't. Sure it was. 50.12%. That was the 2015 vote, 15.12%. Can I? The town received a legal petition from a group of citizens. Right. 
Okay? No. And the town voted to, in fact, rescind their prior authority no. to, to, uh, to, to, to demolish the dam no. and to rebuild it. These are the costs that are necessary to, in fact, do that work. Right. And so if this one article doesn't pass, that one article in 2015 is, uh, becomes moot, right? Because it expires. We'll end up having a new warrant article for funds to demolish the dam. Well, a new one article for that, but we'll already have. What will happen to that over half a million that we have now? It'll we'll go to surplus. It'll go to the unassigned fund balance. Right. So when we have that new one article to decommission, we can actually say we're going to take it out of the unassigned fund balance because we just put the money in there, right? It, it could be, assuming right. you're assuming a lot. And, I, and, and, you know, I spent 30 years in public works, and I can tell you your assumptions are incorrect because you can't sit here and tell me it's going to cost $600,000 to remove that dam. Well, and to take the necessary steps would that are necessary to dredge most of that pond okay. in order to stop this, this thousands of cubic yards of material behind that dam. If the dam is taken down, those thousands of cubic yards of material have to be removed or they'll end up down on High Street. Are you suggesting that the cost to decommission is not necessarily less than the cost to repair? Is that what you're saying? What I'm, what, what I'm saying is the cost of repair could be less than the cost of decommission. Okay, if you, if you. you watch the films that were presented by the state, particularly the state of Maine, where they decommissioned de de a number of dams yeah. up there and they actually put excavators in to tear the dam apart to yeah. remove the water behind it, and the amount of silt and material that came down that river when they did that, you're not going to have a high street. You're not even going to have a meadow pond because you're going to have to dredge that when you're done because you'll be flooding all those houses out down there. And you also have no water control for, for major storms on this particular facility. And there is a pond there, even with the dam gone. Otherwise, the dam wouldn't have been built. The dam was built for only one purpose. The dam was built to, to power a grist mill. Right. Okay? There was a pond that didn't come up to where the dam is now, which provided the grist mill. When they built the dam, they moved that pond up to where the bridge is, or to where the right. dam is now. But there was a pond there before they did that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that water is going to go someplace. And right now, the area there where it did go is all developed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how many houses do you want to buy? Well, um, I'm going to have to go buy what I have now, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if, we ruin, if we ruin structures because we change the route of all that water, <coughs> and remind, remind yourself now that when we had the 2007 floods here, that 60-inch culvert that serves that pond surcharged over North North Main uh, North, North Shore Street. Road. Right. Okay. It itself proved inadequate. Yes, it is inadequate. Mm. Yes. But that water is all going to go down now where there are developments. If you yeah, if you get another day. It becomes a it, it, you know it, this is a serious problem. I don't want to diminish it, uh, and I think I stated the history accurately. And this problem because we I hear from. My, my emails, we all got swamped with emails about two more articles mm -hmm. concerning flooding that's going to be coming before us or has already. And <clears throat> it seems to me uh, that, you know, those houses, well, I agree, I, I, I'm sensitive to the flooding thing. I mean, if, if, if we're allowing building to occur in areas that are known to be flooding, then we got a problem with our governmental process, in my opinion whether it be planning boards, zoning board adjustment, or whoever, our land use boards are allowing construction on property that are known to be flooding regularly. Stop reaching assumptions, which are incorrect. Okay, tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, well, they're incorrect because the existing drainage system works properly. The houses I'm talking about will not be flooded if the water goes down over this dam and goes into, me into Meadow Pond. Yeah. If you stop that function, it's got to go someplace else. Oh, I those, acknowledge. Those I acknowledge what you're saying. Tens of thousands of cubic feet of water per minute are going to go someplace else, and they're going to go into areas that have been developed, and there are going to be problems when you do that. But that 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 uh, because of the t what has the town has allowed to be done in the past was that area was plugged up, and this water goes where it goes now. Right, and and, and, and you're going to undo that. No, I don't want to undo it. No, you may. I am. I am stating the history of the situation. Okay, as, as accurately as I know it to be. Okay. Well, you're, you're not familiar with the engineering problems that are in, in, in 
gendered with this That's particular true. dam and, and, I think and it the speaks, material behind it. I think it speaks to a larger hydrology problem we have. Um, um, I, I, I guess I would classify by saying anything east of the uh, the, uh, the, the uh, estuary. Or, or east of 1A. Yeah, east of 1A. Yeah. Well, well, well no, that, the, no, I'm saying, side, I'm saying east, of the, east of the, uh, the estuary and west of uh, uh, 1A. The problem you have... Because that's where all the drainage seems to be occurring. The problem you have isn't the drainage. Mm -hmm. The problem you have is that nobody has maintained the drainage facilities for hundreds of years. You can uh, take a look at Meadow Pond. Mm -hmm. Now, we had an employee who recently retired from Public Works who used to fish down there in his canoe, and you couldn't see the bottom of the pond. Right. Today, you can't get a canoe across it because the pond is full. The eutrophication, so the process of going back to a meadow, which is what it originally was, that's why it's called Meadow Pond, is in fact taking place. If you don't do something about that, you're going to continue to flood out other structures because you haven't maintained your own water control systems within the community. That they've been neglected mm -hmm. because the town doesn't appropriate the money for them. It's the way it is. It's a larger problem than the Grist Mill Dam. It's a larger problem than the two other water angles <coughs> relative to flooding. I guess that's the point of my concern: is that are we are we addressing this as a as the larger issue? That's why you've got three other warrant articles on there for flooding yeah. to try to start but addressing kind of those a issues. Kind thing, and I'm wondering: right. is there not some sort of um, a grand plan in terms of how to deal with our with our uh, <coughs> uh, hydrology, essentially? Right. Basically, you're stuck with what you got. The town in 1986 did a master drain plan. And the town, in its wisdom, decided to appropriate zero funds to implement any of that plan. That plan took care of some of these problems. And here we are in 2017, and we still haven't put one penny in the, 2080, uh, the 1986 faster drain plan. That, that, you just can't keep on doing that. Was, That's, that. was that plan an engineering plan? Yes, it was. Okay. It was done by a professional engineering. I assume company. you've examined it, and it's still appropriate today? Oh, it's not appropriate today because you've developed so much of the two towns since 1986, <coughs> things have to be changed in it. Right. And I did ask a number of years ago to have the plan updated, and the answer was no. Who did you I, mean, ask? I asked the selectman, and I asked to put an article in the town meeting, and the answer was no. Nobody wanted it. You couldn't find any support for it anywhere. <coughs> well, you find support for it here, just so you know. If I, I can't think. get it in the warrant, it doesn't come I, here. I understand that. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm, I'm saying, you know, we really need to, a, a grander plan in terms of, you know, uh, instead of this piecemeal stuff, because I'm not sure that this piecemeal stuff is going to get us where we probably want to be. You can't afford a master plan that's not piecemeal. You've got a gentleman well, sitting right down the phases, end down there. You're going to have phases in it, but at least those phases will be coordinated with each other. Well, that's why we have those warrant articles in this particular warrant, to start coordinating those phases and take care of some of these problems. Okay. And this is part of that process. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, sir. Okay, you finished, Tim? I am. Sonny's had his hand up yeah, for 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm looking at the, the budget here. It was $26.8 million, right? Through the end of November, you spent twenty three five. How much? What product besides the grist mill? What? I see you already fixed the door, so we don't need a warrant article for that. What else wasn't completed besides the grist mill? There are lots of projects that are still in progress. <coughs> yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out. What? Well, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't sit here and go through yeah, $26 million dollars worth of appropriations like off the top of my mind. You can let me answer, Mr. Chairman? Do well, I have hold, an opportunity to answer? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sonny, we're talking about this grist mill war article right now. Okay, you're about taking too much, you're going too big on this thing. Okay, do you have something more specific that has to do with this grist mill warrant article? Not the big, what? big, big picture of $26 it's million. It's not the big picture. You've got a surplus through the end of November of about $3 million. So what is your question, specifically? So the Chris Mill should, 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 I'm getting all this feedback. I can hear it. I know. I can hear it, Sonny. Go ahead. Please ask your question to me. Hmm? Ask me the question. What is your question that you have? I, I was trying to find out what other projects were 
okay. because the budget was three million dollars in surplus at the end of okay. November. When okay. shortly, when Chris, Christy gets up, she's going to talk. There, the, some of the money that you're talking about, some of the things that we already put into the budget are coming back out because they've been paid for with 2017 money. Give and Christy's going to explain all that to you. Okay. Well, but there isn't. That's this hundred thousand for this particular thing isn't going to come out of this year's 2017 budget. Okay, I, I understand that. Okay, I mean the voters voted to to do it, to fix okay. the grist mill. Um, you mm -hmm. have the flooding on High Street as it is. Yes. Okay. So. Okay. All right. I'll wait for this. You want to wait for her? And you okay. do have a warrant article to address the flooding on High Street. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank uh, goodness. Yeah, Maureen, you wanted to say something. Yeah, I, I'm very confused. How much? If I may, how much money has been spent thus far on this experience? I can't Roughly. Well, they said they have 535 left. They had 650 a lot, so it'd be 115. So with 650 to start with, there's 500 and change left in there. Right. Okay, now, <coughs> I, I guess I don't understand if it's in there why we have to put another 100 now. Because the bids came in requiring mm -hmm. an additional hundred thousand dollars to build the work. To actually, so so no actual work has been done yet on this dam. There has yeah. been work done. It's right. not the not the work of constructing a new dam, but it's the engineering for that. The yeah. engineering. So all the money spent, the hundred and change, was on engineering and permits and, and federal business. That's correct. correct. Yes. Okay, so five hundred thousand and change is left, and nothing has yet been done. But everything has been um, um, ready to go. Well, I, is it ready to go? I guess that's my yes. question. This hundred thousand. The 000. actual fixing is ready to go. We actually have bids to do the work, which would be done this coming year if this hundred thousand dollars is appropriate, because we're a hundred thousand short of the money necessary to construct it for the number of for the bids that we receive. We had a fairly wide disbursement of bids. I think we had something like eight or nine bidders uh, to bid on this, and we're using the low bid, which was approved by the state. But in order to use the low bid, we're 100,000 short. Thank you. Okay. Um, anybody else have a question about? Uh, go ahead, Steve. I think uh, town manager actually explained it quite well. I mean, we've already spent this amount of money. We've already done all the work with the engineer and everything to get to this point. So to finalize this, and it's a will of the people to save the dam, that's what they voted for. So for $100,000, I certainly will vote in favor of it at this point. We've already put out that much money. We've already done all the work, so you know, we can't stop it. Okay, so just to, <laughs> be done. Just to make sure, okay, <clears throat> today there is $650,000 to fix the dam, okay? 115000 of it approximately has been spent. Right to make this now a shovel-ready project. They need 100,000. Yes, another 100,000 will finish this project, okay? So that once it's finished, of course, then, of course, we can maintain it every year, you see? And the uh, DPW can have one additional job to do now, which will be to go down there and, and slide boards in and out um, as the water goes up and goes down and depending on what they wish to do with it. So there is it so then then we'll maintain this well into the future. Probably long after we're gone. Uh, Mr. Jones. I think that, you know, legally speaking, um, the will of the people statement is accurate. But in terms of practically speaking, when seventy two percent vote to decommission the dam and only 50.12% vote to repair the dam, I think the will of the people from a practical level is decommission the dam. Right. Fred, do you have any, any uh, sense of the cost of maintaining this dam should this one off the pass and the work be completed as, as planned? Well, the maintenance of the dam is fairly low in the first 20 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you're right, it may be that we put boards in and out depending on what the water level needs to be maintained to, and the state will make that decision on, on how that is done mm -hmm. and when it is done. Uh, the biggest problem that we have, and one of the reasons we want the dam, is simply because when we have major storm events, 
we need to be able to have facilities to hold the water so we don't impact everything downstream. We need to be able to release it gradually, and, and that's going to be the big task. That means that instead of going up now with a backhoe and pulling rocks out of the wall in order to let more water out, we'll have a control device to do that, which is going to take one or two employees to do a matter of a few minutes, as opposed to sending up, as we did in, in 2007 at the major storm we had there, the Mother's Day storm, we ended up sending up a, a, several trucks, several employees, and a backhoe and started digging holes in the dam in order to release the water. Mm -hmm. That's just not going to happen because we'll have control devices there to do it. So you're saying that the, um, the activity that will occur in the dam is not so much maintenance as it is water management. In the first years of the dam, that's correct. Okay. The big function of the dam is water management anyhow. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to control the water levels downstream from there and not, not impact the flood uh, situation, particularly on High Street. And the real, the real issue here for me, uh, you know, I supported strongly the decommissioning 70%, 70 percent, 70 percent of the voters agree with me back in the day. And I was strongly opposed to repairing it uh, when, when it came up and unfortunately six voters didn't show up because of the weather and, and it passed and now we're down this road of, of uh, having to repair it. And uh, I don't recall the, the issue back in 2014 of if we, you know, of decommissioning. I thought you were in favor of decommissioning in 2014. Uh, I don't recall any discussion. I could be wrong. My memory is fading because of my age, I guess. But I don't recall any discussion about, well, if we remove the dam, then the, wa the water is going to flood some other home or something like that. I don't recall that. Um, you have a facility there now that you've neglected. Yeah. It has a fairly large pond behind it. If you looked at the decommissioning work that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. There was something in the order of 130,000 cubic yards of silt that had to be taken out of there and maintained out of there on a regular basis mm -hmm. as long as the dam wasn't there. There's many hundreds of thousands and additional cubic feet of, of sludge up behind that dam that after you take the dam down is on a regular basis going to have to be removed. Mm -hmm. If you don't, what you're going to do is you're going to blow out the culvert on High Street and you're going to High Street's going to disappear for all intents and purposes. If you saw the, the, uh, uh, the damage uh, over in uh, Alton to the dam that was blown out over there, you'd, you'd understand what happens to the material behind the dam that's been there for hundreds of years. Yeah. Over a period of time, that material is going to gradually be released by the water flow it's going to go down through the meadow pond. It's going to go out into the marsh. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a long time to do that. We're going to have to help it and manage it. Mm -hmm. Even though it's not necessarily our property upon which this junk That's exists. not necessarily so. Right. I use the word necessary. I understand. It's not necessarily. We, we have a surveyor in town who has done a lot of research on this and says, in fact, that pond is ours and that land is ours. We haven't been able to confirm that. Okay. But that's, that's a lot of work's been done towards that goal to find out who actually owns that land. It's immaterial because what we're doing here is we're controlling floods and that's the primary function behind building a dam. As far as not opposing or not being or being in favor or not being in favor of either building the dam or removing the dam, not my function. My function is to do what the town meeting votes for us to do, whether I, it's by I one vote that. or 500,000. I, I appreciate that. I'm just uh, pointing out that the, I don't recall in 2014 when the decommissioning warrant got, was put on the ballot and the voters voted 72 percent to decommission. I don't recall anyone making the argument that it would cause the decommissioning would cause flooding of existing properties. I don't recall that at all. You know why? Because um, I can tell you why. Okay. After they did the engineering study, and somebody came in and, and told us that we had to remove 13 thousand cubic yards of silt from behind the dam in order to decommission it and there would be more silt that would come after that because they're just going to do a trench right up through the entire thing. They said, well, all that, that uh, silt that's, that's waterlogged, once we put the trench in there, that's not going to move the, the material off to the side. Yeah, I, I'm not the smartest bulb in the, or the brightest bulb in the package, but I know darn right well that that material is going to move. 
and I've seen it move in other situations, we would be removing that forever until we remove the entire silt bed on that entire pond all the way back up to North Shore Road. Mm -hmm. so and and that would be, you're talking now hundreds and hundreds, of that, maybe millions of dollars in order to get it out, the, out of there and, and get rid of it, as opposed to try to en encapsulate it and try to control it. If we remove the dam, uh, there'll be a stream flowing in, in, in through where the dam is now? Is that? That's correct. Okay. And yep. that stream is what's going to be carrying the, the junk out over time, is what you're talking about, right? That's right. right. And you're going to remove it all one way or the other. Yeah, and what you're saying is the reason why it wasn't raised in 2014 relative to flooding out of homes. We didn't have the engineering study to show what needed to be removed. Did you know about all the junk down there? Well, basically. We, we did not know how much material was there or what needed to be done from an engineering standpoint. Right. We do now. Okay. You uh, thank you, Fred. Okay. okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Back when we had the Mother's Day storm, what year was that? 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, correct. Two days after I arrived here. There you go. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to town. Now, just, home. just at the time, at the time I was living in Hampton. I'm, I'm trying to remember back. I do remember that flood very well. A lot of things happened. Am I correct in saying that there was a possibility of that grist mill dam breaching? Because at the time in 2006 there was a sluice. And so the town of Hampton went up there with payloaders or whatever, backhoes, and removed the sluice, or most of it. We removed a lot of the rock formation that was there behind Which, the uh, old okay. grist mill to, in fact, prohibit it from breaching. Right. Now, since that time, since 2006, it has remained just as it is, right? You haven't done any other... No, that's not true. Okay, good. The Explain. state ordered us to remove quite a bit of the material that was there that was <coughs> pounding water behind the dam, okay. okay? So that dam level has been lowered substantially Even from more. what it was in 2007. Okay, so you've taken more away. And let's say that in 2014 when they had the first, when the state was saying to everybody in, in the state of New Hampshire, remove the dams, um, recommending it. Um, at that point... Has anything you haven't worked on it since, have you? Only what the states ordered us to do. Okay, because it's under I, state supervision. Okay, because at, at that point, during that following year when it was marketed to heavily to recreate the dam, I went up there and looked at it, and um, and I saw there is some water behind it still. Yes, there is. There may be. I, I'm going to say two or three feet. And then I drove around where um, Norm, the fire, fire chief from Kingston, where he has his place, drove up around in the back there. And what I observed was basically a meadow. It was really no longer a pond. It was mostly a meadow because it's, it's so filled in and everything is growing. It's going back to nature. Things are growing. As a matter of fact, just for the record, the, the berm itself, where the grist mill is, um, it became like a sieve because trees were growing on the berm and so when they c cut the trees down then the roots died but the roots had had created holes where the water could now follow and so the the dam itself behind that and around the grist mill um, it was it was leaking all over the place and if I remember correctly when Norm and Candace were in here years ago Norm explained that um, the, the possible uh, fix for it would be to line the inside of it with clay and then create the um, put the uh, the actual structure back in to hold back the water but in order to fill those holes and, and keep it from being a sieve would be to line it with so many inches of clay is that you have to take the old stumps out first before you can do that okay and then you have to repack the dam it's 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 called uh, channeling uh, with, with the root systems that are in there. That's why we cut all the trees down. That was one of the first things I wanted them to do was cut the trees out of there right. because I'd maintained several dams before. Now, as far <coughs> as, as uh, the inside of the dam itself is concerned, uh, we're going to line that. We're going to use concrete. We're going to use uh, proper building materials as specified by the state and the Army Corps of Engineers to make that area solid so it will stop leaking. 
Right now, that's a relief valve. And those old dams were built to leak. They weren't built to hold water. They were built to, 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 to allow it to weep. That's just the way they were constructed. Of course, in the old day, when that dam was built, there was a large and deep pool of water behind it. There was no, no sediment in there. What you're seeing when you, when you look at the backside of that, that uh, pond up off of North Shore Road, for instance, and you see grass and weeds and so on, the dam is, the, 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 the pond itself is filling with material, which is called the process of a eutrophication, right. and that process is, in fact, to make a new meadow. Right. When you do that, the minute you do that, and that, in fact, takes hold and you have no more storage capacity, uh, you've lost the use of the dam. That's one of the reasons why you have to properly build the dam and have to properly build the sluice ways. And you have to, you have to calculate the, the amount of water running through and the water coming down from upstream. You know, when you, when you look at the area of influence that that dam controls, it starts right up here behind the town hall. It runs all the way up into Northampton, into what was called the Black Marsh, or the Black Forest. That whole area uh, from Mill Road over to, through Northampton, all the way over to the end of um, White's Lane, drains down through this one little dam. That's a huge amount of water. Yes, I know. That, that whole area is a, is a uh, aquifer. It is. And it's just, I lived on Mill Road for a while, I know that yeah, everybody's got problems in this. A lot of water. Well, too much water sometimes. Yep. The, um, We've controlled some of that with uh, Aquarian, who are now keeping the brooks and their properties open right. so the water doesn't pile up. Right. Now, as it stands since, let's say, 2014, it's just, there's a partial dam there, and then the water's just open. It's, Flowing through, basically. <coughs> the state, the state, and the Army Corps calculated uh, how high the uh, the sluiceway that had been removed, partially removed, could be in order to maintain a certain and safe level of the dam, even with a major rainstorm, so that the dam would not breach and it would not fail. And and what they're telling us to do now is we need to construct it properly to ensure that will not happen in the future. And they've approved the plans that, in fact, the engineers have devised. And years ago, they actually, um, there was a choice of either you do this or you're going to be fined per day if you don't. Yeah. They, do they, something. They, they, now, they have a pretty pretty substantial fine structure, right. yes. Now, basically, we, uh, when I say we haven't done anything, that's not completely true because we true. have. Yeah. Because we've, we've basically got, been planning. So the state is saying, okay, as long as you're still planning and doing moving forward with this, we're not going to fine you per day. Well, it's more than that because the state inspects it on a regular basis. We inspect it with the state on a regular basis, and we make sure that whatever recommendations they or the Army Corps of Engineers make for work behind the dam is, in fact, carried out immediately. Mm -hmm. So we have been doing maintenance work on the pond itself at the back of the dam to make sure there is no problem with flooding or failures or anything else. Okay. Okay. I don't have any other questions, Fred. Thank you. It's, it's, knowledge is a wonderful thing. Go ahead, uh, Sonny, you have your yeah. hand up again. I had a couple of questions. This is just a Warren article, so it's gonna, the voters are going to decide anyway. Right. Where's the silt coming from? The silt is a natural function of the... the uh, if I remember, you've got all these weeds there. I forget the name of them, but, you know... If you look at the entire area that drains to that area, that silt is traveling all the way from the back of this town hall all the way up to that pond. Yeah, because, I mean, uh, the few houses that are but the dam now are having flooding problems. I remember... Well, we haven't had any reports of flooding problems, but... Uh, yeah. The, the problem is that siltation is a, is a problem in itself. Yeah, I just and, couldn't and we, understand where the silt was coming from. It's coming from the entire drainage area. Yeah, because it'll go through the culvert into the marsh, and, right. you know, yeah. High Street backs up anyway where those condos are. Well, and, and it backs up because uh, Meadow Pond, which is no, fed I, by this particular real. facility, yeah. has, has increased in, 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 in depth. I mean, Meadow Pond was created in the 1700s by a giant fissure that opened on the Atlantic coast and all salt water fled down in there and the, the ocean sealed the fissure again mm -hmm. 
and that water stayed in there. Yeah. And and this that's where this water all drains to. All right. Well, it's the Warren article, so the voters will decide what you want to do. That's correct, Sonny. And that, and the point is that what all we're doing tonight is we're going to decide whether we want to recommend or not recommend. Right. But the voters, the legislative body, will make the decision. That's quite true. true. So hold on, David. Brian, you were, had your hand up? Um, just a comment. Uh, Mike was around at that, this time or whatever. We have spent months, literally months, going over this. And this is at least the second or third time that we've seen this. Right, third time. Uh, and, okay, and I mean, we had meetings that were postponed because we couldn't make a decision. Um, this is nothing new, and nothing that's been said here isn't true. It I mean, it hasn't been said before. It hasn't right. been said before. Right. So I just wanted to. You're absolutely right. And very shortly, we're going to take a vote and see what happens. But we still have a few more people that have something to... Uh, David, you had your hand up next, please. Give you a little background of your talk. <clears throat> when I was first hearing it tonight, because I haven't known much about the dam, mm -hmm. it sounded like, gee, we were supposed to get it done. We should have torn it down when we should have had one more vote and we should have done it. But as you were talking, and you got more into it, doing it in today's world, which is three years later, um, it sounds like if we did take the dam down, we'd have more dam problems than we they would have envisioned because the silt and everything keeps coming might overpower. And rather than $100,000, it might be two, make it up a number, could be $2 million. So based upon that, I would interpret that your recommendation would be, let's fix the dam. You may not officially have to say that, but that's my interpretation of what I'm hearing. The question I have is, it also would appear, therefore, if they had fixed the dam and made it proper in 2014, we'd now be having the problems earlier than if we fixed it now, because all the things you said were gonna, are gonna happen now if we do build it would have already been starting to occur. It would have been a bigger mess if we had built the dam. Is that your interpretation? No, I don't believe so. Help me with that, please. Uh, what, what, what happens here is that once the, the, the dam is constructed and the water levels are built up to where the maintenance requirement is right. to hold the water, uh, silt will file th slowly file through the, the, the devices and leave the pond. So your siltation levels are going to stay about the same. They, they can't come up any higher than the, the, uh, the base of the control we gonna, devices. We were going to take it down in 14, correct? We are going to take it down, plus you were going to take all that silt out. A lot of it. Right. 13,000 cubic yards is a lot of material when it's wet. Right. Um, that won't happen. It's not going to happen. You're just, all that you're doing now is you're controlling water. That silt's going to stay where it is. It's not going to move. It may move a little bit, but it's not, the, the bulk of it is not going to move. It's going to stay there. The bed of that pond is going to stay where it is until the town makes a decision to go in and clean it out for some reason. I have no idea what that would be. But it'll the idea here is to control the water and make sure that we can control water and control the flooding that may come from the water. Well, if we had taken the dam down in 2014, we would not be able to control the water in 15, 16, and 17. Is that true? That is true. And we would have had where we are today still trying to make a decision. We're trying to make one now. Right. But if we had done it then, what I'm hearing the $2 million, the stuff that could come down in the future over the next 10, 20 years, would have happened in 2014. If you took the dam down, down, down completely. Would have the same problem which you're just, we're discussing now. You would know. You would have all that silt down there at one time. Right. And we would have, we possibly could have created a very larger problem than we were trying to solve. You, you already have fa failing capacity in Meadow Pond, which is the receiving waters. Yeah. You would have had thousands of cubic yards of material, com of solid materials coming down through there. It would have blown out the culverts and the, and the roadway on High Street. So it's a good thing we didn't do it back then, is what I'm hearing. Uh, yeah, and when we looked at when I looked at the final engineering plans, and I saw that just to do the minimum work, you're removing 13,000 cubic yards of silt. Can you imagine all that coming down that hill onto High Street and the effect? It would be dramatic, I know, 
um, but it would be there. And that's one of the problems you'd have to have to contend with. And, and you know, when you, when you look at the base of the pond, which could be here, and you look at it, and the silt is up here, and you cut a channel right down the middle, where's all this material going to go? It's going to fluff in. Right. Okay, they told me that that material will never slump in. It will stay right there, solid as a brick. It's all water soaked. It's going gonna, it's gonna to slump in. It's going to go right down. <coughs> and it would have done that. Yes, it's it would have. in the process right now. Right. Thank we, you. We'd be a real mess at this point. A real mess. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tim, did so you are we going to vote on this? Yes, yeah. I do. You calling for a vote? <laughs> I yeah. call for a vote. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I have a couple of questions. Um, the capacity, Fred, on the uh, <coughs> metal pond, uh, how will that be affected by this work? Will it increase or decrease or remain the same? The capacity of metal pond? Huh. Metal pond will continue to eutrophicate until something does. I mean, if this passes. And if this passes, done. it's not going to do any worse than what's already there at metal pond. So the capacity is going to be unchanged. The capacity will be unchanged. Okay. And, and in a future years, metal pond will become a bigger problem simply because it's connected to the, to the marsh, to the ocean. Right. And you will need to control the entranceway at, at Winniconnet Road to stop all that water from coming up in there at inappropriate times. You may even have to dredge Meadow Pond at some point. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's, uh, that's future stuff. Um, yeah, what kind of future are we talking about? Well, I don't know. That's why we, we put the articles in for study of that entire area for uh, uh, the highway, uh -huh. and, highway. And, and those side streets up at the end of in High Street. Uh, we need to know what's going on out there. We need to do the necessary <coughs> tests. We need to find out what's actually occurring. So since you would anticipate more work going to be done after this is completed, is what I'm hearing, right? Yeah, you're, because you have neglected the drainage system in this town for 300 years, I mean, if you didn't change the oil in your car for 300 years, what would you have? Well, That's basically what we're looking at here. You haven't maintained... I, I'm not disputing capacity. what you're saying at all. I just want to confirm that... It's going to be a problem. There's going to be more work needed after we get done completing this work um, yes, sir, the capacity is. isn't going to change, so our ability to do water control is going to be pretty much unchanged as well, because that's related well, to capacity, right? So from the dam and above that we're talking about here, our ability to control water will be increased. Below that, because we're talking about the Atlantic Ocean, right. it's going to be decreased. And the perimeter of the uh, mill pond is going to be the same, I assume, as well, right? I would assume that as well, and, and we already have uh, all the land that's behind the dam uh, being donated to the town. So when the chairman referred to two feet of water, it's going to remain two feet of water, basically, right? No, it's going to be more once you put the dam in. Once you put the dam in. That will increase the capacity if it's more than two feet. Oh, well, okay. you're going to have a base, yeah. and you're going to put the dam in, and the dam is going to have storage capacity behind it. So depending on what you do with that storage capacity, how many boards you put into it will depend on how high the water level gets behind it. And that's where you get your flood storage from. So we, we will be increasing capacity with this work then? Eventually, yes, because we're going to prevent flooding with it. It's going to control the, control the surge and, and, if, and if we remove the silt, we'd increase the capacity even more, right? If we yes, you would. Yeah, considerably. Yeah. yeah. You might actually be able to, uh, one of the suggestions that was given to me, and, and I, I know this was done in another town, uh, was to remove the silt, to dry it, and to sell it. Right. Because there's no contamination of that silt. There's no upstream orchards there, so there's no, there's no, con no contamination in the silt at all. So it's, it's worth its weight in gold, basically. So do you have a sense of what the cost of removal of the silt would be if well, we added that to the Do you want to venture a guess? Uh, well, you gotta have you got to have a place to put it to dry it. And then you can move it away. But yeah, you, it'd be quite an involved process. Well, we're going to have to do it eventually, you, you were saying, right? Maybe. Probably. If you maintain the dam correctly, the silt level won't come any higher. Well, if it's moving it'll water. It'll go someplace else. Moving water always has silt, right? So yes, I understand that. But you won't be accumulating more silt behind the dam mm -hmm. if you maintain it properly. You know, Mr. Chairman, I. I have opposed this work in the past. I've never heard the water control argument being put forth. It's always been a beautification thing or, or a historic thing, which didn't get anywhere with my, my thinking. Um, 
we were talking about water control is, is the real motivation here, and, and my inclination is, oddly enough, to flip and, and decide to support this uh, for a variety of reasons, primarily because the principle uh, of um, controlling our water uh, flow is, uh, is being put forth as to what we're trying to achieve here, not some beautification exercise like we have heard in the past. So uh, on that basis, Fred, uh, if this is the right thing to do for our immediate water control needs, um, that's great. I would like to see a larger hydrology plan for all of the area I specified earlier. I'm sure this would be part of that work anyway. It will be eventually, yes. But yeah, I, it's I'd a piece like, at a time. I'd like, to, I'd like the voters to have a sense of the enormity of what we're dealing with over time, whatever that time may be. Um, and and that's, that's the point I was making earlier. But I'm inclined to support this reluctantly, but okay. behind the principle, we we've got to have better water control. Okay. We have somebody asking for the vote. Okay. You, re you asked for the vote? We did ask for the vote. Okay. We're going to vote now. Okay. Those in favor of this, those in favor of this, please raise your hand. Okay. I have, okay. I have Sonny. I have Danielle. <coughs> I have um, Maureen, Stephen LeBranch. Uh, Mr. Plouffe, Mr. Henderson, Mr. Jones, and David Moyer. And those opposed would be Brian, and those abstaining would be Regina Barnes. Thank you, Thank Fred, you for being so much. informative on this topic. Well, it will look pretty, too, when we're finished with it. I don't care about pretty. I care about, <laughs> I care about the health of the town. So I, it'll help the health. Pretty is nice. But it won't look ugly, either. Pretty is a nice side effect. The health of the town is what counts.